This video introduces piecewise functions. A piecewise function is a function who's defined in pieces by two or more different rules that apply for different x values. The rule for calculating this function is you calculate negative x squared if x is less than 1, but you calculate negative 2x plus 3 if x is greater than or equal to 1. So if we want to find f of negative 2, well, negative 2 is less than 1, so the first rule applies. And we compute f of negative 2 by plugging in negative 2 for x in the first rule, so that's negative 4. Next, if we want to find f of 1, well, 1 is right on the border in between the two rules, but because we have a greater than or equal to here, when x is equal to 1, we apply this rule. And so we can plug 1 into the formula negative 2x plus 3, so that's negative 2 times 1 plus 3, which gives us 1 as our output. Finally, if we want to compute f of 3, since 3 is bigger than or equal to 1, the second rule applies, and we plug 3 into that rule. That gives us an answer of negative 3. To graph f, it makes sense to also draw the graph in pieces. First, I'm going to draw the graph of mi minus x squared. Just x squared would be a parabola opening up. So minus x squared is a parabola opening down, goes through the points negative 1, negative 1, and 1, negative 1. So it looks something like this. Now I've drawn the whole parabola, but the rule actually only applies when x is less than 1. So I'll keep the part of the parabola when x is less than 1, and I'll erase the part of the parabola when x is greater than or equal to 1. I'll leave an open circle here when x equals 1, since that point is not included in this definition either. Next, I'm going to draw the second piece, the line y equals minus 2x plus 3. So that's a line with slope negative 2 and intercept y intercept 3. So it goes through this point 0, 3, and then it goes over by 1 and down by 2. So it goes through the point 1, 1 over by 1, down by 2, and I can continue and draw this straight line. Again, we only want part of this graph, the part where x is greater than or equal to 1, so I'll erase the part where x is less than 1, this part here. This time I'm going to leave a closed circle where x is equal to 1, since that point is included on that graph. When drawing this graph, it's good to think about what happens when x equals 1, the border point, both in the second rule, where we actually include that point, and in the first rule, where we don't actually include that point, but we kind of have to draw it in order to, anyway to draw the open circle here. Now the last question asks us if this function is continuous. The informal definition of continuity that I'm going to use is that a function is continuous if you can draw the whole thing without picking up your pencil. And in this case, we can't because we have to pick up our pencil to get from the jump here up to here. So this function is not continuous. It's got a discontinuity when x is 1, which is exactly the border port between the two rules. Often, piecewise functions will have discontinuities where they transition from one rule to the next. However, it's possible to have a piecewise defined function that has no discontinuity if the two pieces happen to line up perfectly. For example, if we change the function's definition slightly, I'll call it g of x this time, to still be the negative x squared when x is less than 1, but this time negative 2x plus 1 if x is bigger than or equal to 1. Then when we graph it, the parabola piece will look the same, but the linear piece will be 2 units lower than before, and so it'll actually start right here at 1, negative 1, and go down, and our function will be continuous. That's all for this introduction to piecewise functions.